Well, Christmas time is here, and I got a bunch of stuff to read over Christmas, so I'm, I read a bunch of it already, and I'll make as many reviews as I can um, today. One of the things I got was this. <clears throat> this thing is huge. <laughs> This is my first Buffy graphic novel, really. Um, it's funny that I haven't reviewed the seasons yet, and yet I've watched all of them. I'll try to do that, and yeah, I'm just, I'm a busy dude. Um, I've been on vacation for the last week, so I was, I was busy. Um, this is the library edition of Volume 1, so this includes issues 1 through 10. And yeah, like I said, look how big this thing is, especially for a comic book. I mean, it's this thick and it's like just it's tall i mean it's taller than my bed is it's pretty big and um i read it in two days yeah so this i'm gonna review graphic novels like this if it's a series i'm gonna try to get the volumes of them and review them in volumes so i don't have to review every single issue that'll just make it easier so yeah um let's, let's go ahead and start the review so the characters there isn't an intro like a uh, usual season would be, so I'll use the ones from the motion comic, which I also will pr maybe get in review. Alright, so Buffy, Buffy Summers, still a great character as usual, but the art honestly doesn't look a lot like Sarah Michelle Gellar. Um, they did a good job transferring her personality from the show to the pages, and that's probably because Joss Whedon wrote this. Um, then there's Xander. He's still the pop culture loving one eyed geek. Um, I like the scene where he's like, Don't call me Mr. Harris, either call me Xander or Colonel Fury, because I have one eye now. And that was that was funny. I didn't get the plot point though of him being Buffy's watcher, of Xander who was like Buffy's age. I thought watchers had to like train all their life to become a watcher, like Giles and Wesley did. But then he's like Buffy's age and he's already like a watcher and that I, I don't like that. Um, I would have liked to see Xander mourn over Anya a little more even though this takes place like a year and a half after Chosen. Willow is back. Um, I didn't get how on Angel, Andrew said that Willow and Kennedy were in Brazil, and yet they, in this one it says like she's, she went missing and then like shows up at the, um, at the Slayer station later, yeah. And I am really sick of the Willow struggling with magic subplot. I mean, it went through season six and seven with it, and I'm just like, you know, no, let's, let's, I want to get something new. This is, a new series, a new season. I want to get something, a new subplot, you know? Then there's Dawn, who is a giant for some reason. She, and she she refuses to tell anyone but Willow how she got that way. And so when Willow shows up and she doesn't tell her, that gets a little weird. Um, it was cool, though. Her subplot for this season is um, growing up, making mistakes, and feeling guilty about them. You can kind of compare that to Buffy. And it was cool, though, the scene where the army of zombies attack the castle, and she's like, fee, fi, fo, fo, and steps on them, and yeah, that was, <laughs> yeah, that was classic Joss Whedon. And then Faith. I'm a little tired of Faith being bad storyline. I mean, I thought after Angel Season 4, her fighting Angelus, and her fighting the first in Buffy Season 7, I thought she's, like, completely reformed. She's like, okay, no, but on this, you see her slipping a little bit, and I'm like, you know struggling with being evil like season three and i'm like no i this is we've been through this already let's get something new for faith's character and i did like the faith and giles interaction though speaking of giles rupert giles um i like how he's changed you know he used to be kind of a dorky watcher and now he's <coughs> then he became more serious throughout seasons two three and four and five and then six and seven he wasn't even in that much and in season eight least volume one Giles isn't really in it that much either um it was cool though he now he's like a secret agent kind of assassinating someone or he gets faith to assassinate someone and it was cool seeing you know he trains Buffy the whole point of the series is Buffy and Giles that's the whole point of the TV series Buffy the Vampire so you know it's them meeting him training her and by the time they get to season seven she's trained she's training people and now instead of teaching Buffy he's teaching faith and now he's kind of equal partners with Faith, and that's cool. As for the plot, I like the introduction, though, with, like, it's kind of cliche secret agent movie. You know, they're flying over an action scene, and, you know, they join action scene with a narration by the protagonist. 
And for the Amy and Warren subplot, it was cool and interesting seeing Amy again, but it was too much. I mean, I feel like this is season six all over again. Who's going to be the big bad? Twilight or Amy and Warren? Kind of like how season six, who's the big bad? Dark Willow or the trio? That was just too much to mesh in at once. Um, I did like issue 10, kind of, how when the witch Robin shows Willow and Buffy what Twilight plans to do, but it was a little unclear at times. I, I did have to go to Wikipedia and read about what it, what it meant, and I've had to do that with a lot of graphic novels. So all in all, I did like the graphic novel. Um, was a little unclear at times, but that, that, that might be just because I'm, I'm still a comic book noob. I haven't really read a bunch of comics before. And I'm going to read it. It's worth getting in hardback. Not bad. I'm not going to sentence it, but worth getting in hardback, which I have it in hardback. So, yeah. Um, <coughs> be sure to subscribe and bye.